Okay, good folks. Thanks a lot. Shall we just? I appreciate your coming, and I know you are stressed out. Yes? But this is the crunch time, and we were warned about it. Yes? Uh, I'm happy that we've been in touch with me on the emails. Yes? Uh, the chronic absentees, I do not see in office hours, and I have recommended that they go to the counselor some time back, and I will not respond to their emails any further. And I've let my chairperson and the counselor know this. Okay. On the other hand, you've been hanging in here against all odds, and I appreciate it. Okay, now tell me what's the best thing I can do for you. Um, let's look at the calendars first, yes? Um, can we, if you look at your calendars carefully, are we noticing that it's the last Friday of the term, yes? Uh, is it in actual fact? Uh, what day is the 28th? Put it that way. Uh, sorry, big cooler, I fixed it. Here we are, dear. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, if we look at our calendars carefully. Well, yes, I fixed it. Sorry about that. Um, the Friday, the last Friday in November is the 29th. Yes? We had talked about the 28th for the big paper. Well, obviously, I don't see you on the Thursday. Is the 29th okay? Yes. Okay. And then this Friday, what's the best thing I can do for you uh, in terms of your other deadlines? Do you wish a class to continue work on Bodden's book? I'm trying to get Mr. Bodden to come talk to us. I'm not sure when he can make it. Uh, or do you wish to stay home near your computers and continue working on, excuse me, whatever it is you're working on? This Friday, day after tomorrow, which is best for you? In other words, you can drop off the paper. I'm here till 6 o'clock on a Friday. Yes, I'm upstairs in the library. Um, what my English 101 people do is just drop things off on my door by 6 o'clock on a Friday. What do you prefer? We can continue the lectures on the bottom text that we're starting, we're continuing today. We can continue on Friday, or we can take Friday off and do my work, yes? Uh -huh. Or maybe need to sleep, whatever it is you need to do, okay? All right. Uh, what is it you need to do? How many of you would prefer? Um, because I know that quite a few lecturers have projects due yeah. right now, I'm this right week. So can it, taking Friday off would make life easier? Much easier. Yes or no? Let me know. Okay. And then we start over again. Yes? If you take Friday off, we can just start over again. Fair enough? Yeah. We start over again next Wednesday. Is that the best, the most useful mm -hmm. thing I can do for you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Okay. So we, we've made a decision then. Please pass on the word to the absentees um, that I'm no longer responsible for them. And we, on Friday, we won't be here. Yes? Mm -hmm. Have I written quite a few emails to my chairperson or the counselor about absenteeism this term. You better have. Okay. Um, we're not allowed to get in touch with the people who pay the checks, write the checks for um, tuition to let them know what's happening to their money or the government's money, unfortunately. Okay. So shall we do this then? Any problems so far? You say you're giving me the critique by Friday. You'll drop it off. So I won't come in here on Friday afternoon, yes? 
I'll probably go over to the office by 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that kind of time, yes? But then I'll go to my class, my 4 o'clock class, and come back and check the door by 6 o'clock, okay? Fair enough. Okay, what seem to have been the problems with the critique writing? Any problems at all? Uh, sorry, people, you're, you're not the only ones with the tummy problems at this stage. Yes. Thank you. Um, oops. Could you excuse me for one minute? Okay. Josh, can you press pause for me? Excuse me a minute, okay? Uh, we decided that we would not have class on Friday, but you would give me, if you needed the extra time, you would give me the papers, the critiques on Friday, either in person, uh, if you find me in my office, if not, just put it on the door. Fair enough? Okay. Uh, I may have a big class upstairs in the library from 4 to 6 with the civil service college people, yes? And they're always there and they're always on time, yes. <laughs> yes, those people are model students, trust me. And so uh, that gives us more time. Do we want now? What's the most useful thing I can do for you now? I replied to you and I told you do what makes life easiest. Some people have given in the papers now. The earlier you give in the critiques, the better. And our big paper is due the last day of November. Yes? Okay. I expect by this weekend to get more emails from people who in actual fact have been working on, you know, the plan for the big people. Okay. Yes, there. What was the last topic that you added to the big idea? I can't remember. Can anybody say? Uh, too many things, too many big you papers. Something about power? Yeah. Forms of power? Different types of power? Mm -hmm. To stick up in, are some of these topics the same as each other, they're just in different disguises. If we're looking at power and powerlessness or forms of power, are we also entering the gender area? Yes or no? Of course. Is gender often a metaphor for power or powerlessness? Do we see a lot of power in the hands of male characters on the course? A lot of powerlessness in the hands of, if you want to put it in the hands, of the female characters so far? Yes or no? Think about it. Yeah? What were our topics so far? Christina, can you? Just let me, what you have. We have power or forms of power or powerlessness, yes. Uh-huh. Can we just go back? I'm afraid I can't do it from them. Thank you. Then, is there a hero in Miguel Street? We mentioned that and we said, of course, is there a heroine? If you're doing that one, expanding it from what we started out with as the first essay and you know, that kept blossoming out. Uh, is that about heroines? Is there anybody on, um, working on the concept of the hero? Is there a hero at all that we've seen in Caribbean literature so far? The tragic hero is who? Is it, or is it the failed hero? Is he tragic in the sense that do we see the definition, the classic definition of tragedy as a truly the fall of a truly great person? Or is he really the flawed hero? Yes. Uh, but my question then is, Sarah, if we don't see any heroes, do we see any heroines? Anybody interested in that one? Does that also take us into the gender area? Just doing some brainstorming now, 
since I won't see you on Friday. Yeah. If there's anybody like the lady over there, sorry for pointing, working on images of males and females, does the question of the hero or the heroine come in there as well? <laughs> and for that one, do we have to establish an opening definition of who or what is a hero? Now, of course, as Mariah Carey and these people tell us, the word hero can refer to a woman as well. Yes? In other words, is it one of those words that we've learned should be gender neutral? Of course. So do we find any heroines or female heroes on this course who command our respect as readers? Mm -hmm. But are we looking also, when we're defining heroes and heroines, are we also looking at the issue of power. Yes. But are we also looking at the concept of virtue? Goodness. Now, if you look up the, the concept of the hero in most, um, what are, in most places, literature sources, are you going to find that you're sent back to Roman and Greek mythology and Shakespearean literature? and that the hero is in actual fact a person who uh, has superhuman qualities and strengths, yes? But in actual fact has what? Superhuman challenges to face, yes? And uh, the, quite often the Greek version of the hero, of course, faces challenges that are sent to him directly from the gods. The Shakespearean hero, of course, tends to have what? Somebody came to my office about this. Was that from this group? Uh, the Shakespeare, wasn't that you there? Yeah. yeah. The Shakespearean hero, of course, is the superman of a sort. But in actual fact, despite his wonderful qualities, Yes, his qualities of excellence. He has what Shakespeare calls the overdose of one complexion. One complexion meaning one personality quality that Shakespeare also calls the tragic flaw, F-L-A-W, which in actual fact, that one quality in his personality causes an imbalance as opposed to his other positive qualities. And as a result causes his destruction. Yes? Okay. Uh, so if we're looking at A then, is there a hero in Miguel Street? It's in there, is there a hero or a heroine on this course? Consider the word hero as gender neutral. Have we met either male or female characters who conform to traditional definitions of the hero. But can we also say that for purposes of this course, I will define the hero as so and so. In other words, do we also have our own versions of the hero? People who find the strength, the resources somehow, the inner resources, yes, to what? Overcome major survival obstacles. Does that definition of the hero sound realistic? Mm -hmm. Have we met any people like that, any characters like that, off the tops of your head? Which character comes across as having this amazing capacity to face all kinds of obstacles with grace and, of course, strength, fortitude? Sorry? The Earth Mother, the Boy's Mother, and which other mother figure? Thank you. For my, the mother in, for my mother, same as what you were about to say, yes? The mother in, for my mother, may I inherit half her strength? Yes? 
Any other characters that come to mind? What about the lady, Miss Artemetra Johnson, in Bodden's book? Does she face a horrible death with courage, immense courage and fortitude and grace? She doesn't know when it's coming, but she knows it's coming. Yes? Mm hmm. Uh, does Pearlie emerge? I hope we have read these now. I've been telling you to read them for a long time. Does Pearlie emerge from what could have been a really nasty competition? with the other local women, with her maintaining her dignity and her self-respect and her grace. Yes or no? In the middle of the gossip and the competition and the intragender prejudice, does Pearlie hang on to her self-esteem and her you know, self-respect and her grace? Not to mention her self-control. Yes. yes. If you haven't read this yet, of course, I'll be just chatting. Okay. Then, of course, uh, discuss the use of structural elements, okay, and its relation, the relationship of that use to major themes. That one is more obvious. The growth journey as seen on this course. Anybody working on that? <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, ladies? Do you have to define growth, the growth journey, early in the essay by paragraph two? Yes. And what's crucial? Do we need to point out that growth is not just physical? Right, Christian? Were you saying that? Yeah. Okay. In other words, that this journey is never just a physical journey when we talk about the growth journey. Yes, we see the boy changing and growing, of course, but is he growing just physically? No. It's a different person that we meet from the one who says, I guess Laura must have held a world record. Beat that. I mean, he's obviously a little boy who is sitting on the porch watching his neighbor's stomach changing. Yes? But... By the end, when he is working in customs and drinking and smoking, he's a different person. Obviously, he is a man, a young man then. But psychologically, has a lot changed in between. Yes, you had up your hand there. Um, I was just wondering, do we need a bibliography for the paper? Do we need a bibliography? Yes. And do I have handouts? I think they might be in here. If you use other sources, do you need a bibliography? Yes. And did I do some handouts for us? They might be in that big bag with you. might have wondered what was in there. Um, do you need to have it? Not necessarily. Uh, but if you refer to certain works, say, for instance, you're looking at Kenneth Ramshan's famous uh, uh, concepts about West Indian literature, yes? you are going to make a quotation, uh, or you refer, you say, as Kenneth Ramshon said, etc. Miguel Street is blah, blah, blah. And then you could put Ramshon in brackets, comma, so and so. Or you can simply put it in the bibliography. But what do I absolutely not want from you? I do not want you to give me other people's ideas as if they were your own. But we all know that by now. Does that make sense? I also suggest to you, dear, as I suggested in the beginning, that the best way to go is before you go to internet to look up any of these writers, write down your own views first. Why? Internet has this way of Greenwashing. I don't know if you know what I mean. It's, you press Naipaul and wham, out flows this, this fountain of words, yes? And it can get very overwhelming, can't it? Yes. Okay. Uh, where were we? Topics. The growth journey. So 
my question is, are we seeing this pattern? That in actual fact, by paragraph two of your essay, you must establish definitions of the terms you are using. For purposes of this paper, I will define the growth journey as follows. It is a long-term experience that is not just physical in life, and it often includes certain challenges, yes, or milestones, which are not just physical. In this course, for instance, we have seen the growth journey marked by what? Loss, abandonment, disillusionment, as seen in the growth journey of the boy narrator in Miguel Street. However, the growth journey can also be seen in terms of recognizing certain values as seen in the storyteller in For My Mother, May I Inherit Half Her Strength. Mm -hmm. Are you telling the reader right away exactly what growth is about? It's a, it's, it's a process, and it's not just physical, and it can be marked by all kinds of disappointments, losses, even death. Thank you very much, Roberto. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next one. Discuss the depiction of women or the image of the female. You had asked me there, sorry for pointing, what's the name again? Sharon. Sharon? Cheyenne. Cheyenne, yes. You had asked me if you could also deal with the male figures as well. You asked me that long ago, didn't you? And I said, yes, of course. Why? Because, as we said, in real life, men and women are kind of the flip side of each other, aren't they? Yes? They're the complement, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T-S, of each other. They're the completions of each other. Yes or no? Of course. So in actual fact, then, even if you weren't officially including the male figures in your topic, Cheyenne, you would probably have found that once you start discussing the females, their interaction with the males is inevitable to be discussed. Yeah, you can't avoid it. In other words, if we were discussing, for instance, Miss Laura and Mrs. Herrera as two unforgettable images of the female that we've met on this course, don't we have to discuss how they interact with men? Yes. And of course, do these interactions get defined by, and do these interactions also express? What's the key word? Values. In other words, the, the images of the men and the women keep expressing for us different value systems. Obviously, when we look at characters like Mrs. Herrera and Miss Laurel, the writers are inviting us to analyze the sexual values, yes, that these female characters represent or do not represent. Obviously, these female characters do not represent a very crucial sexual value, which is what? Fidelity. Yes? And is there an irony involved with these two characters as well? They represent negative sexual or gender values such as sexual infidelity and promiscuity that we usually associate with what? With who? Male characters. In a sense, do these two sex goddesses, if you want to call them that euphemistically, do they in actual fact 
take us over into the traditional male territory of promiscuity? Yes or no? The area of the young bulls. Yeah? Okay, so if we're looking at male and female figures, and or if we're looking at gender, are we also looking at values? Yes or no? And should we say that early in the paper? Yes or no? In other words, will your first page or your first page and a half be almost purely argumentative? Where you are, and of course expository, where you are defining the terms, how you will use certain terms, and also you are doing what? You're defining the terms, and you are presenting an argument as to how you interpret the, not just the topic, but how you respond to the topic. In other words, I see in the depiction of gender on this course also a metaphor for what? Power or powerlessness. However, all of these writers show gender as related to visible or invisible value systems. Some of these value systems include fidelity, Yes, moral strength, the capacity to honor one's word, and so on. Furthermore, as a reader, I learned the following life lessons from these values analyses and these characters' adventures. In other words, let's face it, are there some themes and topics which most definitely teach us life lessons, of course. I mean, let's face it, from the time we meet Miss Laura, remember, we are not like the boy who is entranced by this process of leavening and disappearing, and leveling and disappearing as if she were, you know, a, a, some kind of cake in the oven, you know, and it comes up and you look through the window of the oven and you say, oh yes, it's ready now. Those of us who bake, yes. <laughs> Thank God for fasters, we don't have to bake, yes. Uh, well, you know what I mean. You put muffins in the oven and they come up. That's what he means by this leavening process, yes? Okay, but the boy is fascinated by this process, but the adult in us, has one thing at the back of our minds as readers, and that thing is what? This cannot end well. This can't end well. In other words, does the work, do many of these works also engage us, as we said about the Naipaul, dualistically? They engage the child in us and the adult at the same time. And the adult is constantly learning life lessons, yes? But there are some works in which, from the beginning of our introduction to certain characters, the adult in us has one thing to say. This can't end well. Even when we leave Mrs. Herrero comfortably on the lawn in her shorts, sipping her, is it a margarita perhaps? Ah, with the butler in the background, yes? Does the adult in us say, this will not end well? Yes or no? In other words, if you were making a film of Mrs. Herrero's story or of Miguel Street, would that butler have just been a butler or perhaps a security guard in disguise? Or perhaps boyfriend number 10 in disguise? In other words, could you have added some irony there and some suspense? Of course. Okay. Then, of course, if we're looking at the impacts and the uses of irony as seen in any works on this course. Is irony a biggie? 
as we've seen it. Josh, will you just make sure that this is being taped for me, please? Yes. Is Aaron a big one on this course? Yeah. Uh, what do we notice with Aaron? Is it is still happening? Yeah, everything is all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but magic piano is coming up here. What's happening? It's just telling you. Are we sure it's working? Mm -hmm. In your password. Yeah. Try again. Well, actually, we don't need to tape this, but I was just wondering. Yeah. It was working. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, question then. If we're looking at irony, are we looking at almost all of the major readings? Yeah. But when we're looking at irony, are we also looking at dualism? Yes. And when we're looking at irony, are we we also looking at an element that is both structural and content-based. In other words, go back in time to English 101, yes? You know, this group of, that huge group of people I have after this, some of whom just can't stop chatting, you know, English 101, yes? What is it we notice or remember? We're told that irony, yes, of course, points out contradictions of various kinds. But irony also is a way of perceiving life. We, we talked about this, yes? And irony, of course, points out what we know about life. It's filled with contradictions, yes? You know, your grandmas used to tell us, don't judge a book by its cover, or all that glitters is not gold, and so on. Life is full of contradictions. And, of course, the more life lessons we learn is the more contradictions we come upon. Is this true? Yes, of course. So, irony is also a way of perceiving life. And tell me, is it also true that this way of perceiving life is what? It often means we're thinking outside the box. Because Aaron is so full of surprising dimensions. Yes? On the surface, we see Laura as this happy-go-lucky person. Yeah? But as we get further and further into the story, Aaron shows us that she's not that happy. Yes? And what seem to be her jokes, and her happy-go-lucky lifestyle are actually a cover for perhaps even hatred of men or certainly hatred of herself, a hatred that she expresses in regard to her daughter's pregnancy in such a way that she actually pushes the child towards suicide. Yes? And is Laura's closing statement to us, it good, it good, it better that way. Something like that, she says. A statement on that self-hatred. In other words, she'd rather her daughter kill herself than go down the pathway she has been on. Sorry? That too, in practical terms. Yes, of course. But are we looking at irony then as something that is, yes, a structure, but it's so thought-provoking that it lands us the deep end into content or theme, that it's almost impossible to see, to separate irony as a structure from irony in content or theme. Yes or no? Yes or no? Would that be part of your argument? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what else can I do to help us? Some of us have sent me topics of your own that you're working on. Great. What else can I do to help? But remember, before you go too far on your own topic, let me know. Okay? Anything else? What else can I do for you? Yes, Josh? For our, like, definition, like, can we say, like, um, 
say the dictionary definition is this, but the way I interpret it. Exactly. But for purposes of this essay, and also in terms of what? In terms of my readings on this course. In other words, the dictionary may define a hero or a heroine in one way. We are not checking our phones, my friends, are we? Uh, the dictionary may define these terms in one way. But in actual fact, as a result of my readings on this course, I have gotten a new insight into the nature of the hero or the heroine. And therefore, for purposes of this paper, I will define a true hero or heroine in the following way. Perhaps, of course, in terms of how the writers show us the forces of poverty. In other words, given a truly oppressive environment of poverty, the hero or the heroine should be seen as so and so. Or given a truly oppressive environment of sexism, yes, in which abuse of women is Consider normal, yes? Then in actual fact, the heroine emerges in a different way. For instance, Lorna Goodison's mother figure emerges as a heroine in my eyes because she what? She puts up with a great deal of emotional abuse and of course financial abuse too, you could say. With what? With grace and a commitment to her children. And in this paper, I will discuss this poem in more detail. Because remember in the beginning, the first one and a half pages, you will refer to some of the things you are going to discuss. But then later now, do you move on to the detailed discussion? Yes. But in the first one and a half pages, you're letting your reader know what are the things or the characters you are going to discuss. Yes? Sorry? Um, the, the husband in, for my mother, may I inherit her for a strength? No, no, sorry. We're talking about the mother, yes? Uh, did we say the mother in for my mother may I inherit her for strength? Yeah, it's a lot of emotional abuse. There's a lot of sexual infidelity, obviously. Yes? And, of course, we're living in the age of AIDS. I don't think Goodison was looking ahead to AIDS when she wrote this. Are we looking at a lot of dangerous sexual behavior on the man's part? Yes? But also, is he an irresponsible Partner, remember, she sewed, she looked after us, she taught us to read and write, she sewed, yes, she judged our conflicts, she sewed, the first word I learned to read was singer, sewing machine, in other words, she becomes the provider as well, yeah, whereas this man seems to do nothing but sleep around, yes? Okay, does that explain what we mean by financial abuse? Yeah, I, no, I just, I just no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I hope I said the mother. Does this help in terms of our planning? So am I asking too much to hear from you people Sunday evening on your plans for the big paper if I have not yet heard from you? You must do it. Absolutely. Okay, we can look at our calendars and decide. Okay, uh, we're looking at. Okay, today is, we're looking at, for instance, uh, two weeks more, yes, for the big paper, the end of the month. We, when we meet again next week, this time, please come. I'm hoping Mr. Bodden can come then. When we meet again, will we talk about the progress you've made on the big paper and what I've received from you on the weekend? Yes or no? 
In other words, do we have to paste this thing? Yes? Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Oh, can we just, Christina, thank you there. Can I just check if I have in this big bag those handles on setting up the essence? Um, hold on a second for me, please. It's done. Why don't you? If you're not happy with it, but you wanted to make the deadline, I respect that. Thank you. Why don't you email it to me as well so that okay. I can respond so any to any updates that I make? Yeah. In other words, if, if I respect the fact that you people are respecting my deadline, though you may not be happy with what you handed in. If you're feeling, are you listening to me, really unhappy with what you have handed in, um, you can email it to me or I'll simply bring it back to you and say, changes or revisit this, okay? But I do appreciate that we tried to meet my deadline. Thank you. Are you listening to me, folks? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. um, no, the handouts on the... Setting up of the people. Do I have those with me? Which actually, there we are. Uh, are they terribly important? Not really. Mm -hmm. Can you there? Mm -hmm. um, is this a research paper? No. Am I more interested in your ideas than in anything else? Yes. As long as it's not an internet essay. Thank you. Yes. We have to come out of here now, darling. Let's go outside, okay? That is for what? I won't be here for the Why? Yes. That's okay. Okay, folks, if you forgot to darken thesis paragraphs, should you get anxious? No. I just am happy that we did something. Thank you very much. Okay? I'll send you about my big paper. Yes, send, send me about the big paper, but resend me yeah, this. I, I will as well, but about the big paper, when I send that, do you want what I've done so far, or do you just want the thesis paragraph? The thesis paragraph. Okay. Okay. Right. And any problems you are having? Yeah. Okay? Josh, I do need some serious help today. Uh, we're in a bad position. Yes? Sorry. You didn't know you had class? No. When? Friday. Last Friday? Yes. Why didn't you know? Because there was no class on Thursday, so I thought it was the same thing. Please. Uh, do you have my email address, my phone number? Why wouldn't you call if you had yes, any doubt? I do have it. Yeah, why didn't you get in touch? Uh -huh. Josh, can you turn off for me, please? We have to go over there and give these people these things, I'm afraid, before they start chatting, okay? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sorry. What is it that you have? I just wanted to tell you. I well, that's not my problem, you know. You have missed so many classes. You're one of the chronic absentees. You're a very talented and gifted lady, but you missed my classes. Uh, I did, in fact, tape it and put it on the blog, and you can get the blog address from one of these people. I taped it for you and the other absentees. It's on the blog now. Can we turn off? I want the paper by, for, call her and remind her, I want this paper by Friday on my door by 6 o'clock. Do you understand the critique? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't ask my mom. I don't ask my mom. We can turn off.